subscribers. So right now in super base, I'm not sure if it's like it's a bug or is it like a new feature for it. But if you go into the trigger right now, and if you want to create a new trigger, we have access only to the public tables only. So right now, what if I wanted to create the trigger from the auth user table? So the goal is like this. So when there's a new user sign in into our application, you want to call a trigger to insert uh, the record into the uh, table. So right now, as you can see, uh, I have this table user right here. So um, that I just created. And also um, I have the function to create user on sign up. So whenever the user click login, for example, login GitHub right here. And after they finish the process, there's automatically insert the, the record inside the user's table that we have. So we need to create a trigger for that. And then for the trigger, we need to listen to the OS table use for the OS table. And the OS table is, is this one right here. So right now we have this record user right here. So I'm gonna delete this user and then I'm gonna show you the demo. So whenever there's a new record into this OS table, we want to create a new record inside our public user table. So in order to create a trigger right now, uh, we have to use the actual editor because from the UI, as you can see, I showed you earlier, the trigger right now is available only for the public table, even though if we change the schema to the auth, and as you can see right now, it's, it's still uh, showing public. So one way that you can do that is go to actual editor, and then I have created uh, everything right here, and the, all the command you can just copy and paste from the description. So this one is uh, do exactly our goal is to create a user on sign tr trigger. This one is after the insert on OS table. So it means that when they, there's a new user insert into the OS user table. So if it's insert, so for, and then we're gonna call to the function create a sign up. So this is gonna be a function name. So this is gonna be a trigger name, okay? This is a trigger name and this is the function name. Make sure you match the function name uh, that you have inside here, otherwise it will fail. And yeah, this one you can name whatever you want because this is just a trigger name. And so right now we can just try to run this one. Let's hit run. So when you run this one, when you see something like this, it's mean it's successful. And if we go into trigger and then we can go to OS, we can see that we have created and on the table user as well. So to demonstrate that if this is working, so right now we have this user table, which is empty, and I'm going to log in with the GitHub right here. This is my previous apps. And so if it works successfully, we can have the user table uh, with the new record of this user. So if we go back here, so you can see everything work as expected, our trigger and the function is working. All right, so that's how you do it. And also I have created the drop trigger as well. If you want to remove the trigger, because right now we not be able to remove the trigger as well. So from the UI. And so to do that, you can just replace this, uh, create this one is going to be a trigger name and yeah, just run this one and then it will remove it. So I'm going to, let's say for example, I'm going to remove this one. It seems that I do not write the, the wrong, the right trigger. So come back here. So going back to OS, so we can have this one. So I can just copy and paste this one and click run this one. And as you can see, it's successful. And if we go back into the trigger and let's uh, refresh this one, let's go to OS. As you can see, the trigger is removed. All right, so that's how you do it. All right, hopefully this helped some of you that face these issues. Alright, so don't forget to share, like, and subscribe for more videos like this. Thank you. Bye-bye.